So in this video, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about this strange little pencil sharpener apparatus. It's called the Sunago pencil sharpener, uh, but it's really more of a pencil joiner. What it's supposed to do is to get your pencil pieces and to uh, basically allow them to be affixed together so you could build yourself uh, <laughs> like a Frankenstein pencil. Uh, it's a really fun idea. I've seen a few kind of like, uh, you know, hit videos about it, I guess. And I got a little bit intrigued. And it's always been hard to find. Uh, but lately it's been on sale for about 30-ish dollars. Before that, it was impossible to find for under 60. So I picked one up. I bought it in this clear version. It's more commonly seen in a black and red, mostly black with some red highlights. But I figured the clear version would be cool. So the whole thing is a little bit confusing because usually, you know, pencils are not meant to be joined together and there are some instructions here, but they're not super clear. Uh, I'll kind of go through them quickly and you could just pause the video, but basically it's a three step process. You have different holes, holes are numbered. And they line up to each of these. So here's step one. This is when you are cutting the hole into the uh, the lower piece. This has a, uh, a hole in it. You cut it with a razor blade that sticks out here. We'll see that in a second. Then you go on to step two. Step two is where you sharpen the pencil. This is the upper piece gets sharpened and then you are adding in a basically an extension that goes into the uh, the lower. Lastly, you have step three, which is barely a step at all. You're just cleaning up what you made in step two. The first thing we're going to do is uh, actually let's just demonstrate the interior components first. And this thing does come apart and we'll see step one is right here. Uh, it's hard to see on camera. It's easier to see in person, but it's basically a, like a spear tip, like a pointy razor blade. It's a little bit scary. Uh, so that's why it's so covered up. Step two looks like a conventional pencil sharpener, but it has two horizontal blades at the top. And then step three is just a hole, a square shaped hole in the plastic. Not very exciting. Okay, so we're going to do the joining now. Go to step one and you do that with the lower piece. First you press it and make sure you're fully centered. Yeah, we are, I could see there's a little indentation right in the lead. Now you need to get this piece right here. And this is uh, obviously you don't want to be pushing down too hard on this sharp lead. You could really hurt yourself. So you just get this piece, put this in here. And uh, now you have, you can gain some purchase on this. And this little thing uh, is coming apart a little bit, but basically you're pushing down and drilling a hole into the lower piece. So that's this yellow piece right here. It's not that easy to do. When I saw the demos of this thing online, I thought it'd be really easy and kind of enjoyable. Uh, it's not really like a meditative, relaxing thing. It's kind of uh, honestly a little unpleasant. And see where we are. So now a hole is forming in the lead or in the, uh, the pencil here. What the company doesn't tell you is you need to really tap it out and clean it out. Also, it doesn't work with every pencil. Uh, a pencil like this, this is a Musgrave cedar pencil. It just splits. You can see I split a couple of my tiny little ends that I was saving. Knowing this sharpener was coming, I was saving my pencil ends and I split a bunch of them 
because the cedar of the pencil, like the real wood, doesn't really work so well with this first step where you're inserting the razor blade. You can see, probably make it out right there if there's not too much glare. You're inserting the razor blade and twisting a hole in it. As you start to use it more, what happens is you'll get something like this where all the shavings are coming out, but they don't come out on their own. You really need to pull them out or tap them out, which is really messy, and that's not really clear. Eventually, you will start to get a hole, and uh, this one is a little off-center, unfortunate, uh, but my technique is, uh, I would say, not ideal quite yet. This one isn't exactly done, so I'll keep going. Okay, so I'm done with step one. I have the, uh, the lead shavings and all that stuff is coming out. Here's what I'm left with. Most of that should be in the sharpener, but uh, it just ends up not really happening like that. So you kind of have to tap it out on the table. And here is the hole. It's a nice round hole. Again, it's a little bit off center, but that's okay. Uh, and this pencil held together didn't crack like those Musgraves because this pencil uses like a uh, some sort of like composite wood, you know, like it's a wood-like material, but it's kind of plasticky. A lot of the true wood pencils, you know, the pencils that are nice enough that you might save the ends, I haven't been able to get this to work with them. Okay, so now you have to pull this out, which is actually not that easy of a process because it's in there, which I had to press hard and you uh, kind of mess up your pencil. You get all that lead collected in there, and then you kind of ground down the corners. Eventually, you'll get this out. Okay, so step two, you're going to get the upper part of the pencil, and you're going to shave it so that you have something to insert into the lower. So I'll spin this over to step two. And we'll get going. This stage is much, much less labor intensive, and it's really more akin to just sharpening a pencil. So, we'll see what's happening is we have a conventional sharpener at the bottom, and also pieces that are like horizontal razor blades that are creating a stopping point. Okay, so eventually it's just not going to sharpen anymore, and you'll have something like this. The longer the tip to start with, the better end you'll get. Anyway, so we'll move over to step three. And step three is just going to clean up this piece here. It's barely a step at all. You just put it in this square aperture. Okay, so eventually you'll get it in there. You'll twist it. It won't turn that easily, but there'll be a lot of friction, but it will turn. And now we are left with this, kind of this weird little... Uh, sharpened pencil stump or whatever. It looks like a tiny pencil, but really it's just the insert to go into the uh, this piece here. And now the actual joining process is very simple. You just put it in and that's it. It turns out that that's not really it because these... It's still, you know, it fits well enough. Clearly it fits in there and it holds there, but it's not locked in, right? And the company mentions that for step seven, make sure to use a woodworking adhesive to firmly uh, fix the joint pieces into position. And before I bought this, I could never figure out how the two pieces were held together so well. I thought it was some sort of you know woodworking mastery from this expensive sharpener, but it turns out that it's just wood glue uh, holding it together. You know, there's some friction here between the two pieces, but really it's just the wood glue is doing the heavy lifting, which I find to be really disappointing. So here's the end result. It'll you know with wood glue it'll look just like this, uh, and clearly it's not perfect. This one. The end wasn't entirely blunt, so uh, it, there's some wood exposed. Then 
I'm a little bit off center. So you get something like this where it's, you know, just half a millimeter or a millimeter off, which I find to be really aesthetically unappealing and just quite annoying. You know, you could line up the text and things like that to make it look a little bit better. But at the end, you kind of get a kind of a lopsided pencil. And so, yeah, so I've been through the whole process maybe, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 times. I played around this thing with, uh, you know, for a fair bit over the past couple of weeks. And here are some, I would say, typical results. Not my worst work, not my best, but this is uh, fairly typical. So uh, these ends are a little blunter here. So you get a little bit better of a match. These two pencils are essentially the same size, so it's pretty good. The join is a little bit off. You could see it's not quite ideal. Uh, and this one I've used here, that's why it's so sharp. Uh, but And it, it holds up well because I did a good join, and then I used like uh, a nice woodworking glue, like an Elmer's woodworking glue, uh, which is, uh, that's strong stuff. It's stronger than a standard Elmer's glue. Then here's one. I wanted to salvage this yellow pencil that was using, uh, you know, had been sharpened with a razor for some carpentry, carpentry or whatever. And uh, it's too big for this Wapex one that I've been, I was using these, a lot of these for a while. That's why there's so many of them here. And they also, the plasticky material they're made out of, that sort of wood-like substance, holds up really well to this eraser, uh, this sharpener. So that matches, it's way off, really clunky. Uh, but it's nice and firm, and this is a usable, sharpenable pencil. So mission accomplished, I guess. Here's what happened before when I was talking about what happens when you try to do that drill. You drill the hole, you know, step one, into a nicer wooden pencil. Again, this, the one you would sort want to save. The uh, When you apply the pressure with that razor blade point, uh, it's not really a drill, you know, that's twisting and drilling uh, it's also splitting it, unfortunately, which you have downward pressure, and that just split the wood, and this is not really salvageable. You know, maybe if I slammed enough wood glue in there, it could work, but unfortunately, this is what happened over and over again. Anyway, so that is the Sunago pencil sharpener, pencil joiner, whatever. Uh, definitely not a product I would recommend. Fun idea, and, uh, you know, I think... They started off with some good concepts, and reusing pencils is just such a fun, enjoyable thing. But it just it really doesn't work. And for you know between thirty dollars on the low end and six dollars on the high end, depending on your uh, where the Japanese seller. This is only sold in Japan. The uh, seller you find and the shipping costs and all that uh, just just not worth it, unfortunately. So uh, good concept, but doesn't really pan out in reality. Thanks for watching.